Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video, we're diving into the truth about magnesium deficiency. Again, magnesium has many different effects from the, the cardiovascular vessels to blood pressure, to anxiety, to energy, to relaxation, to muscle function, to nerve function, you name it. We're gonna go through it and break down the truth about magnesium deficiency. All right, so let's dig in. So up top here in green, right? The green's gonna be some of the benefits. And then the red down below are gonna be some of, the, some of the detriments and also some of the lab testing that we can do to evaluate magnesium deficiency. So off the bat, I already mentioned the cardiovasculature, the, the cardiovascular vessels and how they have an effect contracting and relaxate, relaxing essentially. And magnesium is a natural beta blocker. So beta blockers are a series of medications that go in, they block this beta receptor, especially around the heart, and that receptor has a basically a, a docking station for adrenergic, adrenergic hormones, essentially adrenaline, epinephrine, to bind into that spot and then create more heart pumping and more excitability. So what we do, magnesium as in a way of blocking and binding into that um, receptor site and preventing the adrenergic hormones, the adrenaline, from having that effect. So it helps promote relaxation. Sleep, because magnesium and GABA work together, right? Magnesium comes into that adrenergic receptor site, it blocks the epinephrine and the adrenaline, but it also then promotes GABA. And GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So if we're excitable, if we're really, ex really excited, if we inhibit the excitation, we start to relax. So magnesium has a really great effect of upregulating the GABA, which turns off the excitement and blocking the adrenaline. Magnesium is really important. It helps balance blood sugar. It's part of one of the cofactors that is needed to help metabolize sugar. And it goes into the Krebs cycle as well as well as glycolysis. The problem when you eat refined sugar is it requires magnesium to actually break it down and metabolize it. Therefore, you can create deficiencies in a lot of nutrients by eating refined sugar, like berry berry, vitamin C, and then even magnesium deficiency. Now, magnesium has over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body, over 300. I mentioned some from detox to brain to relaxation to cardiovascular relaxation to blood pressure to inflammation, the whole nine yards to sleep. So you can see it has many different effects. And if we take away magnesium, it can cause a whole myriad of different symptoms. Now, here's the interesting thing. Because magnesium has so many different roles in the body, in some people, magnesium may express itself with a different set of symptoms based on that person's uh, genetic predisposition. So it's not like, oh, I have high blood pressure, take magnesium, it'll always knock down the blood pressure. Is a good chance that it will, but it may also improve your sleep, improve your fasting, blood glucose, et cetera. I think you get the drift. Supplementation, a couple things here. So, Magnesium supplementation, you wanna choose the right kind. Magnesium oxide is like the magnesium sidewalk chalk. It's very cheap. A lot of people put it in their supplementation. It's okay for like constipation because it helps get the bowels moving. I prefer actually magnesium citrate for that. It's a little bit cheaper of a magnesium, but it can get the bowels moving. You have the upper end echelon of magnesium, which are like the magnesium glycinate and the magnesium malate, which is basically magnesium chelated to a glycine amino acid or a malic acid molecule. I have my own formulation you can check out below in my store. It's a magnesium malate um, magnesium chelate and magnesium malate fits into the Krebs cycle so it can actually help improve energy and blood sugar during the day. I like that one. A glycinate or a malate are very good and you can check mine in the store on the screen here as well. And so then also there's magnesium threonate, which can actually go into the body via transdermal. Excellent if you're pregnant and you're getting nausea or morning sickness, or you have preeclampsia or high blood pressure, you can use magnesium threonate and that will help promote relaxation and decrease the nausea as well. And then outside of that for magnesium, you have also the Epsom salts, which are like magnesium sulfate. So you can always draw a nice magnesium sulfate bath with one to two cups of Epsom salts, 10 minutes in there, light a lavender scented candle or put a little lavender scented essential oils on your body and you are in paradise. Nutrient dense food. So what are the best foods for magnesium? Well, number one, green leafy vegetables are gonna be phenomenal. Uh, fish and seafood are gonna be excellent. Nuts and seeds are gonna be great. 
Avocado is going to be great. Dark chocolate is going to be great. And even I mentioned the nuts and seeds. So those are the big ones. There are some like wheat germ and, and some grains and such. I think that's kind of a misnomer because when you factor in the gut irritation and some of the lectins and some of the phytic acid and enzyme inhibitors, you may not really be able to break down and actually utilize that magnesium. So the bioavailability will be lower. So I like the more paleo magnesium foods, leafy greens, fish, avocado, you can even do some banana, and you can do your nuts and seeds as well. So those are some of the, the benefits over here. Also, I'm gonna to touch upon a couple things here as well on the negative sides. So the major benefits, blood pressure, relaxation, sleep. Again, magnesium has a natural kind of benzodiazepine effect, which helps kind of upregulate GABA so you feel more relaxed, kind of like a benzo without you know the side effects. And, and you know, if you drink a little alcohol with it, you won't fall asleep for a long period of time. I mentioned the supplementation benefits. I like the malate. And I mentioned a lot of the nutrient-dense foods. So, off the bat here, let's talk about some of the negative effects here. So poor digestion. A lot of people with magnesium deficiency, let's pretend you're already eating and getting a lot of magnesium in your diet. Well, you may have poor digestion and that's why you're not absorbing it. We need hydrochloric acid to ionize minerals. So we have our digestive cascade, like a, like a set of dominoes all stacked up. One domino falls over called hydrochloric acid, which activates proteolytic enzymes in our stomach. The second domino falls over is we have the gallbladder and the pancreas produce enzymes and fat um, enzymes and protein enzymes and bile salts. And then we emulsify and break down a lot of those foods and we also ionize our minerals. So if one domino is a knock over, being the first domino HCL, the rest tend to not fall over. So if we have leaky gut or food allergens or a gut infection by an H. pylori, because that typically inhabits the stomach and creates lower levels of HCL, or if we have poor enzyme levels, that's gonna create a digestive uh, environment that's not conducive to absorbing and breaking down magnesium. Not to mention the average person, uh, about two thirds of the population, according to the CDC, is deficient in magnesium. Some people say 60 to 80% of the population is. We need about 300 to 500, closer to 500 milligrams a day of magnesium. Now, if you're doing a good chelate, like a glycinate or a malate, like I mentioned here in the beginning, you need less because it's more bioavailable. So most people aren't getting enough and most people have gut issues and leaky gut and they have low levels of stomach acid and enzymes where they're not even breaking it down to begin with. Anxiety, I mentioned the natural benzodiazepine effect, right? Xanax or the benzo family has, is commonly prescribed for anxiety. Magnesium can help significantly with anxiety. The problem is a lot of these medications don't actually fix the fact that many people could have anxiety because they are magnesium deficient to begin with. Insulin resistance, like I mentioned, when you're resistant to insulin because you're eating too much sugar, the insulin receptor becomes numb to the sugar coming in here. All right, so insulin's basically the, the bellman. It opens the door for the blood sugar to come in. The bellman doesn't want to let anyone in when they've been prank, prank, uh, you know, ding dong ditching at the door. It wants to keep everyone out. And that's what happens with insulin resistance and high blood sugar. And what's happening is that magnesium's getting burnt up to try to metabolize that blood sugar up. So magnesium deficiency, like I mentioned, with the insulin resistance. Many people with low energy and with adrenal fatigue, because they burnt up a lot of the adrenaline, right, from their adrenals, from stress, that's gonna burn up your magnesium as well, because it's gonna crush and rotate that Krebs cycle, and that Krebs cycle is gonna burn up magnesium. So if you're under a lot of adrenal stress and you're hitting those adrenergic receptors and you're hitting that fight or flight sympathetic nervous system, you're burning up magnesium like crazy. Also drug depletion. If you're on proton pump inhibitors, whether it's Omniprazole, Prilosec, Nexium, Prevacid, all of the PPI medications that lower stomach acid, there's a great chance you're causing nutritional deficiencies with that family of medications. Also, the medications that are used to treat high blood pressure or treat you know, heart rate excitability, uh, whether it's tachycardia or the beta blockers or ACE inhibitors or like the, the LASIK drugs, the hydrochlorothiazide diuretics, they actually create magnesium deficiency. So it's like, go figure, if magnesium deficiency can cause these symptoms and the medications that are used can actually increase the deficiency more, what does that mean with these symptoms below? It means the medications to treat these symptoms actually perpetuate more of those symptoms. I mean, it's a 
It's a very good business model if you're a psychopath. <laughs> so again, it's not creating lasting effect there. And again, antibiotics can also do it as well. Antibiotics can also create more magnesium deficiency. So again, I don't like the business model because it perpetuates more sickness and doesn't actually fix the underlying problem. And it creates drug-like dependency over the decades. So not a good way to do it. Uh, lab testing, how do we figure out, how do we figure out if you're magnesium deficient? Well, number one, you can just look at your diet. Now you're eating a lot of the foods that I mentioned. Number two, is your sugar out of control? If you're eating a lot of sugar and you're under stress, you're probably just cranking up that Krebs cycle and burning through a lot of the magnesium. Uh, number three is, do you take magnesium and do you feel a beneficial effect? Those things alone can be really good object or it's just a subjective indicators whether or not you're magnesium deficient. You can also use conventional lab testing and RBC magnesium. Some people say five or above. I, I say five typically, some say six. I very rarely see six or above. I would settle for five or above on the red blood cell magnesium and on the serum magnesium, that's the more common one that's running your CMP or a comprehensive metabolic profile two or above on that is a pretty good level for your magnesium. So again, these are some great objective tests that you know if you're deficient in magnesium. So if you have adrenal fatigue, stress issues, you can't relax, you're tired but wired, you're anxious and you have poor energy and maybe you have some brain fog and some cardiovascular issues, it's more than likely you have magnesium deficiency. And if you've done a lot of uh, hunting around and already tried magnesium and you're not getting better, click on screen, schedule a consult with myself, or let's kind of roll up our sleeves metaphorically and dig in and get the right test done to look at the systems to see what's going on with your body in conjunction assessing your magnesium levels. So again, this is Dr. J signing off. Make sure you click the subscribe button. I'm putting out videos weekly. You get my podcast, you get my newsletter, and you can get access to all this cutting edge free information to help you take control of your health. Again, thanks a lot. This is Dr. J signing off. Have a great weekend. Bye.